The following is a special presentation of the SEC on ESPN. ESPN Films presents A hand off to Herschel, left tackle Story coaches The best against the best Story players Story games The SEC is Story Shaq and Dale is a film about basketball, but it's a film about a relationship, a really special relationship between a huge megastar that we all know now and Shaquille O'Neal and his college head coach, Dale Brown. It dates back to when Shaq was a quote unquote nobody uh, in Germany on an army base, struggling with the decision whether or not to even play basketball. It's a story about love. It was a relationship that proved to Shaq there was one person who would always stand up for him regardless of what happened on the court and also off the court. And it gave this young man so much confidence. Shaq says that he wouldn't have been the player that he became without Dale Brown. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Dear Shaquille, congratulations on a great rookie year in the NBA. I was so proud of you, and especially in the manner you conducted yourself. Don't be content. Stay away from all distractions. Be a good listener. Trust, but never cease to be vigilant. I shall never forget our first meeting in the mountains of West Germany when you were only 13 years old. Coach Brown means the world to me. Even now, I get an email once a week from Coach Brown. And, you know, gotta... He's been emailing me since email was invented. John... Not once has he ever asked me for anything. Never let me down, always been there for me. And I promise you. One word comes to mind, loyalty. I hope you didn't come all this way expecting to hear a story that's just about basketball. Down to O'Neal. About a team that couldn't quite win the way everyone expected them to. Don't let them in this game. Hope you didn't settle in just to remember what it looked like when the player, bigger and better than all the others, ruled college basketball. And I hope you don't think that just because one is black and the other is white, and one is a little older, and one's a little younger, and one was a coach, and the other was a player, that two men couldn't become hey, come on. Here we go. <laughs> come on, let's roll. the very best of friends. And without this friendship, none of this might ever have happened. Dale Brown was my basketball saver. Prior to me meeting Dale Brown, I was 13 years old, freshman, 6'9", horrible player. I can remember one coach telling me, your father's in the Army, he's pretty big, you're pretty big, you should join the Army. So. In 1985, LSU coach Dale Brown was conducting a coaching clinic at an Army base in West Germany. Get a tap on the shoulder. S sir, I can't dunk a ball. Can you send me some information on how to strengthen my lower extremities? Wow, this lower extremities. Words that I learned in the dictionary that day, because I'm like talking to a college coach, let me get some big words out. When I get back to LSU, I'll send you a weight training program. He looked at me, he says, uh, or how long you been in the army, soldier? I said, no, I'm not in the army, I'm 13. He went crazy, what? He tried to hide me. What? What 
He was looking around for other coaches. What? About a week later, I'm checking the mail. LSU. Coach Brown had gone back home to his office in Baton Rouge. And just as he'd promised, the very first thing he did was mail that letter to Germany with the fitness plan for the 13-year-old kid. Another week, another letter, another week, another letter. He wrote me every week until I left Germany. Oh, you had me doing calf raises and, yeah. and wall jumps, and I still couldn't dunk. I remember I had to write you a letter. And I was in tears, because at that point, oh. everybody was saying, you're going to have to join the Army. The whole time, I, th I can't believe this. I got back to the office, everybody was gone. I, I can almost give you word for word, dear Shaquille, I'm so sorry what happened to you. But I found out in my life, whenever anybody said I'd never make it, I felt inferior, I was defeated. If you always sincerely try to do your very best, and you never give up under any conditions, sooner or later, God will take care of everything else. When Shaquille was 15, he and his family moved back to the States to an army base in San Antonio. By then, Shaquille had grown into his body, and he soon became the biggest high school basketball prospect in the country. At center, 6'11", Shaquille O'Neal. Here's Shaquille. He's got him with the ball. He'll take it out. Letters with scholarship offers were coming in from all over the country. After I get my um, degree in college, I want to make about $6.2 million a year. <laughs> there was one coach who had been writing them long before anyone else. And that meant something when Shaquille came for his official visit to Baton Rouge in 1988. Remember when you came for recruiting? I said, we're going to go to my house for a little while, what have you. We're walking up the driveway, and I remember you kind of, wow, you didn't really say anything. You're, wow. Because you know why? I'm going to tell you why. My house was one story, three bedrooms. Me and my brother shared a room. I know. My mom and dad shared a room, and my two sisters shared a room. And when I seen that little cathedral, I was like, this is the biggest house I've ever seen in my life. And I remember I opened up the door, and you said, wow. Yep, you got a is. pool in your house, you said. <laughs> I said, well, it's not in our house, actually. I can't believe this. But first of all, I've never seen the pool at somebody's house. Can you remember what we did? We walked in the house, and I remember you walking over here. In fact, I can tell you exact pose. You covered up this whole window. You said, gee, I remember. criminy, look what you got. And I turned to you and I said, someday, you'll have a house that'll make this look like an outhouse. I visited North Carolina, North Carolina State, Louisville, uh, University of Illinois, and I visited Baton Rouge. But what made me fall in love with LSU, I sat right there behind us in that little section yeah, right there, yeah. the student section. Yeah. 75,000 people, and the announcer says, if you want Shaquille O'Neal to play here, make some noise. <sighs> That just right. scared me. I was like, right, right. Touchdown! LSU might always be a football school first and foremost. But when Coach Dale Brown had arrived in 1972, he'd begun building a top notch basketball program as well. By 1989, Coach Brown had led the Tigers to three SEC titles and a pair of Final Fours. And with Shaquille O'Neal committing to LSU, well, now Brown arguably had the most talented team in Tigers history. My mother, my father, my brothers and sisters, we all got in the caravan. We exited Dare Rumpel Drive. With an LSU flag? With an LSU flag, and we came here first. Mm -hmm. But you don't know this, but mm -hmm. when I walked through these doors and I felt this breeze, I was nervous. I played at Robert G. Cole High School, oh, and the biggest attendance was probably box. Cracker Box. Yeah, biggest yeah, attendance yeah, was probably yeah, 500 yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And the first time I played in front of a big <clears throat> crowd was when we went to the state championship. Prior to Shaq's arrival, every dream had been fulfilled, except one: the national championship. So now, when Shaq parachutes in here, we've reached the promised land. LSU already had one big star. Chris Jackson. 
backwards into Jackson. He wanted to lie. Who conjured up memories of LSU's original scoring machine, the legendary Pistol Pete Maravich. No one had a better scoring average in the history of college basketball as a freshman than Chris Jackson. 53, 10, and coming in with Shaquille was another giant. One of the very few who could stand next to Shaquille and not look small. Stanley Roberts. When I got here and seen Chris and Stanley and looked up and seen the Bob Pettit jersey and the Pistol Pete Maravich jersey, I was terrified. I can imagine. I remember the day you told me that you're good enough to get your jersey retired. I didn't believe you. You know why? Mm. So I was the third best on the team. And I never heard you tell Chris that's, or Stan that's, that's, that. That's true. I know I was good, I know I was big, but, but I wasn't was that good. there passion in you and a quest for learning. And you came up to me and tapped me on the shoulder. Coach Brown, you said, listen, I don't have to be involved in the offense. Just let Chris and Stanley do that. I just want to block shots, rebound, and play defense. Because I already knew in my mind that I wasn't really that good. For Shaquille, it was going to take a little time to get his confidence going. To take over to the basket this time, drawing the foul is Geldner. And that'll be the fifth foul. Shaq's freshman year didn't start out with a bang. So another lesson to be learned for the big man. Finally, I called him in the office and I said, I'm going to bench you. You need to sit by me to start the game out and let me show you what's going on, then you go in the game. They were about halfway through the season when it all clicked against one of the best teams in the country. We're getting ready to play UNLV. Larry Johnson, Greg Anthony, wow. Hunt unloads a three if it goes, and it goes. Their team is damn near an NBA team. Wow, but an eighth Butler, and he slammed from behind. As a freshman, I had to create ways to get mine. To Jackson, working on by, shoots the jump shot, and it doesn't get it. Rebound, though, is O'Neal puts up the shot, and then he's fouled by Butler. Whenever we played the big teams, this one, you really got a shot. Three on one, short jumper by Jackson, doesn't go, tipped up in by O'Neal. I'm like, wow, this guy's a human. I just blocked Larry Johnson's shot. Rebound Johnson, though, put back is blocked by O'Neal. Maybe I can play. The crowd is going crazy. Jerry Tarkanian sucked on his towel, double that game. Tiger fans could tell something special was in the making. But off the court, Shaquille wasn't quite acting the part of a superstar just yet. He was just another LSU freshman, loving the campus life. You know what I like the best about Bruce Hart? Oh, you can eat for free. You could eat for free. How was the food, seriously? It was terrible, but it was free, Coach. It was free. I didn't have no money. And if I'm correct, I think my room is, let me see. I think my room is this way. It's my room right here. See if anybody's in here. Oh, the bed is still here, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> this is my there bed, Coach. Look it's still this. here. Look at this. Yeah. My whole freshman year, because I'm 17, I was a designated driver. This how I used to sleep, coach, against the wall. And I didn't mind doing it. I never did like alcohol. You know, my father told me if he caught me doing drugs or, or sipping alcohol that he would kill me. One night, I'm chaperoning the guys, tired. I don't need class. I'm going to miss a day. <whistles> Only did it once. When I walked in, I didn't say anything. I put my hand right here. And then I said, Shaq. I thought I was dead. I was seeing a white hand, and I look up. The angelic voice, and I was like, God? Oh, I miss class. He's like, let's go. So I remember I came out here, I followed you, and for an old guy, you beat me over here. You walked over here so fast. I don't know how you got here so fast. And I remember you had that whistle in your pocket, uh... and you, and then I run. Here, I'm like, okay, I did one lap. I remember, I, I think I did about 30 laps. I run, and he just gave me a chance to go like that. <sighs> and you better not quit. Oh, if you quit, you're done. I ran four hours. Never again did he miss class. In fact, his freshman year, the highest GPA on the team, 
Shaquille O'Neal. This class is going to be out here running. Shaquille and the Tigers would do a whole lot more running when Paul Westhead and Loyola Marymount came to town. And a lot of fans wondered if LSU could keep up with Loyola's fast-breaking attack. A lot of people say that's the best college basketball game they've ever seen. Jackson at long range, throws up a three, it's going to be short. Rebound O'Neal, he will go back up, and it is good, and he's down! That game was the first time in college that I played against a guy that I couldn't break. Gathers has been incredible, 39 points. But Hank Gathers. I probably blocked his shot eight times. Spin, shoots it, deflected, rebounded by O'Neal. He just kept coming back. Gathers in the paint. Shoots, gets it, and he's fouled. Loyola Marymount twice overcame double-digit Tiger leads to send the game into overtime. Tied at 134. Already making it the highest scoring game in LSU history. Hank Gathers comes up to me and says, this will be five minutes of war. Inside the paint, the shoot does and hits. Did this guy just really try to intimidate me? So now, like, I'm giving guys a look. Get it to me. To Singleton. Singleton. To O'Neal. Powers up and lays it in. You can criticize me. This is an amazing basketball game. You can judge me. Penetrates for the sack, puts it up, rejected by O'Neal. One thing you will never, ever be able to do, ever, is intimidate me. The game is over. Shaquille finished with a triple-double. 20 points, 24 rebounds, and 12 blocks. The unforgettable win helped LSU rise to 11th in the nation. In Baton Rouge, they were primed for a Final Four, a national title. Great expectations. Maybe too great. After that game, I couldn't walk. I slept, I didn't want to eat. Guys, bang on the door. Let's go to Tigers. Nah, man, y'all go ahead. Just lay in the bed. You know what I call this bench? What? I call it dreamful attraction. Because you know oh, the law of attraction, sure. whatever you yeah. vision up will come true. So I used to sit here and, well, to be honest, the girls dorm was behind us. So I used to sit here and, and watch yeah, all the to pretty be girls. Like, but that's the real answer. But no, like, <laughs> like times when I would get uh, down to myself and say, am I really good enough to make a pro? Uh, I would just sit here and dream like Did that. you ever in this dream, did you ever think, is this delusions of grandeur? Can I really do it in the dream? Did, were you convinced? Or no, I was never yeah, convinced. Yeah. Heading into the 1990 NCAA tournament, folks down on the bayou had high hopes for Shaquille O'Neal and his 22-8 LSU Tigers. With a growing feeling that Shaquille, Chris Jackson, and Stanley Roberts were destined to deliver Coach Dale Brown LSU's first national championship. I've seen a team that loves to play together. I've seen a team that uh, have unlimited potential. But after a first round win, LSU came up against Georgia Tech. And they had a freshman phenom of their own, Kenny Anderson. Inside, Shaquille was a force. Scott, outside. Oh, my goodness. But Georgia Tech on the outside. Here's the finish. Williamson. No good. Georgia Tech makes the Sweet 16. We had the JFP syndrome on our team, jockeying for position. Chris was the man. Stan wanted to be the man. I wanted to be the man. Everybody wanted to get theirs. And I think it cost us. Disappointing. I could have recruited better. I could have motivated him better. I could have done this. I could have done that. And almost as soon as the game was over, LSU's big three was no more. I think it's best that I go now. You know, I, I just feel now it's time. It'll be the best time for me tonight. We had two problems. 
Chris goes to the NBA. We lose him. Stanley, who was destined to play in the NBA, wouldn't go to class. He flunked out. People to this day, what happened? Shaq, Stan, Chris Jackson. What happened? So there's no Chris Jackson, no Stanley Roberts, and no front covers of any magazines preseason. But there's a saying down here on the bayou that the most dangerous animal of all is a wounded tiger. Nice pass. Because we thought they would be back. Left the kitchen pretty bare. So now my sophomore year, all those guys are gone, and everybody on the team is looking at me. Not only am I the man, but I got to live up to that. But the 18-year-old kid had been training to be a leader his whole life, guided by a very strong stepfather who Dale Brown had to contend with as well. Philip Harrison, sergeant in the military, strict, tough, opinionated. He was a forceful man. I get a call before practice. Hey, coach, how you doing? I never called him Philip. How you doing, Sarge? He said, what you bringing in Bill Walton and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for? I said, I'm bringing him in because Jabbar has a hook. Walton's a very good passer. I tell you what, coach, I taught that man how to dunk the ball. I don't want those guys around. They're not the player he is. I said, Philip, I call him Philip this time. Philip, is there anywhere on that uniform you have head basketball coach? If there's not, don't ever call me on his playing again. Yeah, you're right. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, and that was like it. That. We never had another argument. Right. I loved Philip. Yeah. I loved yeah. Philip Harrison. Society has always taught us since we've been coming up that one part, one part of the pie, you got to go get an education and learn and be able to manage yourself and take care of yourself. Then when I came here and I met you and I saw that you was an extension of my stepfather, who I call my real father. I don't really believe in the whole stepfather thing. My real father left us when we was younger and my stepfather took over. And I know he was a tough guy, but he was also a soft and gentle guy. A soft and gentle guy, and you know what, you're just like him. You, know, you yeah. remind me of him so yeah. much. Dale Brown never knew his biological father either. His dad left the family when Dale was just three days old, leaving him to be raised by his mother in a tiny one-bedroom apartment. I didn't, couldn't afford a basketball, so I used to fold up mitts and go out and shoot in the hot water pipes. And I came home, and she's all upset. Dale, she said, the landlady came down here, and she said, you get that brat out of the hall. He's scuffing up the linoleum. Dale, what are we going to do? I took off down the hall and knocked on the door. The woman opened the door. You leave my mother alone. Do you understand that? Then I walked down the hall scuffing the linoleum. Came home from school, 12 years old, and there's a welfare worker. I can see my mother's real nervous. She said, well, you know, the Ward County Welfare gives you $42.50 a month and another thing. She go get your purse. She looks through if she's got any money. And I remember sitting there saying to myself, Nobody again will ever intimidate my mother. No one will ever, it, she's wrong. I'm gonna stand up for what's right. It's not about black or white. It's about wrong or right. As the 1990-91 season tipped off, the lessons from coach to player continued. And so did the big test on the court. Inside O'Neal. That's a man, great agility, mobility. The Arizona game was a big game. They were number two in the country. She's got a big wide body. Dick Vitale was here, and that always fired up people. Rooks back in, inside, as the ball starts. Look at him handle it. Look at him handle it. Look at him handle it. Are you serious? He makes himself look like Magic Johnson. Remember when you brought Dick Vitale to speak? Mm -hmm. So he pulls me to the side, and he says, listen, why don't you just go out there and have a good time? This Arizona team is too much for you guys today. I don't know if you put them up to that. No, I didn't. You didn't? <laughs> I did not. So now I'm pissed. We're tied. Pass to Foul ball. Look at him. He says, that's unstoppable. Just throw it up to me. Just throw me the rock up in the air. Just flip it up. I'll finish it off. Wait, are we going to win this? Are we going to win this? Are we going to win comes up with it. There it is. You always told us not to celebrate too much. Yeah, I remember. And I went to my dad. I remember. I had to. 
And I'm looking at Dick Vitale, I'm like, don't you ever underestimate me and LSU. I didn't have a TV because I couldn't afford one. I had to make a decision to get my music equipment or get the TV, so I got the music equipment. My little closet, I had my LSU sweats in. Mm -hmm. Look, I had about 20 LSU basketball sweatsuits, a couple of LSU football shirts. I was size 17 and I couldn't afford dress shoes, but I, I didn't have any. I didn't have a lot of clothes, but I, you know, I was just so proud to be on the LSU basketball team at a prominent mm -hmm. university. Only thing I wanted was sweats. The quad was a place where it met four corners, four different directions, but for athletes, the quad was a place of acceptance. Ah. So let's just say you had a big game. You would come sit in the quad, let people recognize ah. you. Another thing the quad would do is let the girls see you. Like, I would come, you, you know I was a shy kid. I never knew what to say to a woman. I just used to come sit in the quad, and I used to see him giggle. There he is. And remember when I had the fake cell phone? I do. I would wait for a girl to walk by and ding, 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 ding. Hello? Yeah. The people at LSU put air in my confidence. Shaq, what's up, baby? Shaq, Dick Vitale said you're going to be the first pick. Oh, that's the girl that was at the party last night. She looking, she looking, she looking. Nope, she didn't look it. I gotta get a few more rebounds, she didn't recognize it. And then I look up and I see the Shaq pack. Kids on Shaq, Shaq, Shaq. And then people make names up, Shaq Attack, shaq mania you know, love Shaq University. Mm -hmm. As his sophomore season went on, and he lobs it to O'Neal. Flush. Shaquille was the most dominant force in college basketball. O'Neal, tremendous power. Huge rise for the sack. It is blocked by O'Neal. On his way to averaging 28 points, 15 rebounds, and five blocks a game, leading to talk that he could be the number one pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Dally of O'Neal. The Tigers were a mainstay in the top 25, and their superstar was living up to all the hype. And that's center. But there was another player determined to remind folks. Christian Leitner. That Shaquille O'Neal wasn't the only big man in college basketball. Coach Mike Krzyzewski's Duke Blue Devils had been to the Final Four three straight times. I think Christian Leitner is tired of hearing about the best center in college basketball. Christian Leitner, he ate me alive. They destroyed us. He embarrassed me. Pump fake, drive by me, show him like, who is this guy? Leitner finished with 24 points, while Shaq just had 15 and struggled with foul trouble. Taught me a lot, though. Said, you know what, you, you, need, you need work. Christian Leitner kid is way better than I am. So now, you know, even though Dick Vitale and them are saying you could be the number one pick, I'm worried. Almost as soon as it began, T.J. Pugh, Charlie Eagle, Smith, and a block. LSU's 1991 NCAA tournament came to an end at the hands of the Yukon Huskies. Suddenly, two years of Shaquille O'Neal's college career were complete. And now everyone wanted to know if the National Player of the Year would stay in Baton Rouge or head to the NBA at the age of 19. So now the talk is again, oh, he's going pro. He's going pro. Now that my son's a fairly good basketball player. Fairly good. Uh -huh. Fairly good basketball player. <laughs> Everybody's telling him now, dump school and go get the money. But you need the money. You need the education so you can manage this money. So I go home, and remember, my mother gave me an accounting problem. She said, balance his checkbook. And I couldn't balance it. And she said, you're not ready yet. 
when Coach Brown gives me a list of all the athletes that left too early, got a lot of money and went broke. Because I have a lot to learn on the court and in the classroom, my intentions are to return to LSU next fall. In Coach Brown's mind, Shaq will go pro one day, but let me get him ready for it. Today is the start. Please give us, we'll give you, the next 174 days. My junior year, come back, I'm happy. I am the man on campus. Fans love me. But sometimes things don't go your way. Probably the most controversial thing that occurred in your career here. David Duke. I remember you were really, really upset with him. David Duke was a former Louisiana state representative running for governor. He was also a divisive figure as a former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. It's said Duke's election would even affect the sports industry, making it hard for LSU to recruit black athletes from out of state. It would be a devastating blow to LSU athletics. It's as simple as LSU basketball or David Duke. You can't have both. Tiger Rag, a publication covering LSU sports, interviewed Shaquille and asked him about Duke running for governor. And I said uh, to them, uh, look, I'm not a politician. He also said that if David Duke were the coach trying to recruit him, he'd have told him to take a hike. But that didn't stop Duke from finding a way to use Shaq's comments on the campaign trail. Well, Shaquille O'Neal on the LSU basketball team said it wouldn't, my being governor wouldn't affect the state at all. He said, uh, unless I was perhaps coach. Next day, I get killed. Shaq supports KK Kaylee. I'm like, who the hell? I, I never knew who the guy was. What's a, what's a stronger word for angry? I was so ticked off. I know what hate can be. It's wrong in what that guy did. Coach Brown helped Shaquille draft a statement correcting the record. Webster's Dictionary defines a lie as to make an untrue statement with intent to deceive. That's what happened. But I want the fans and the people in the community and the state to know I'm no Uncle Tom. If the tax rates are high... Then came rumors that Duke was planning to come to LSU's next home game. I said, if David Duke is at that game, I'm walking off the court with the team. So they had they had police around the building. Did you know that? No, because I don't know I know nobody was. told you. Yeah. The key word is support. When I needed somebody to back me up, Coach Brown supported me and stuck up for me. David Duke lost that election for governor and never showed up at a game. And soon enough after, everyone's focus shifted back to basketball. Junior year, I'm flicking through the channels. ESPN got us ranked number six. Hanson drives for the sack, flips it to O'Neal, and it. I admit, I started to get a little bit of the big head. We go play UNLV in Vegas. I'm having a good time. We lose by 20. Go back to Arizona. Destroyed us. We lose by 20. There he is. He's got the trailer. Get back home. Reality kicks in. We're out of the top 10. We're out of the top 20. I get a call. My grandmother. Huh? Hello? She's like, she's like Sean. Playing kind of weak. You got to go out there, get aggressive. You just got to, you know, play like the old shack and, you know, I listen to my grandma. We're going for one thing, and that one damn thing is in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it's a national damn championship. Battle plan, tag with it, and has the ball taken away by O'Neal. Again, the long pass down to Hanson, to Boudreaux for the easy layup. The Tigers spun off 11 wins in 12 games bringing excitement back to the bayou. Flies it around Pugh for the jump shot. Blocked by O'Neal out of bounds. 
really admire what you're doing. Keep it up. And in early February, fans camped outside the PMAC for the biggest game of the season. Duke and Christian Leitner were now the defending national champions and coming into Baton Rouge for a rematch as the number one team in the nation. I hear stuff every day, uh, Leighton the dog you. Leighton is the best, and Leighton is this, and Leighton is that. Shaq's by far the best player, but that doesn't mean he can't be beaten on any given night. This was the scene this morning. They opened the gates about 10. They flooded in here, the capacity crowd. Not only do we have a matchup of two outstanding college basketball teams, but this game will feature a duel between two of the game's best big men. And at center, a 7 1 junior from San Antonio, Texas, number 33, Shaquille O'Neal. Duke was America's team. We actually envied that team because the team that they were, that's the team we were supposed to be. We got to get them. To the corner. Well, they are penetrating again. Oh, the Shaq knocks it into the seats. Good fake by O'Neal. Oh, the scoop. Well, that's a seven-footer making the move like that. A double pump. Christian Leitner, he's beautiful, he's good looking. Leitner gets out on the break and sets it down. I can't let this cat outplay me again. O'Neal powers his way in. O'Neal on the stump. And when he gets in there, he can just be there. I don't care. Shaquille O'Neal is a name in Baton Rouge, but now I need to make him a household name around the world. Trying to take the lead, O'Neal gives him the lead. Shaquille would have 25 points, 12 rebounds, and seven blocked shots. With 11.45 remaining, O'Neal roaming the lane, gets open and stuffs it. But just when the Tigers thought they had a shot to win, the Blue Devils stormed back. Wow, later for three outside. Like we had regular military discipline, but they got that special forces, black stuff over the eye, come out the water like this. Caught Leitner off guard. Beautiful pass that time by Grant Hill. Thomas Hill from Leitner. It turns out, even that night, there was one person who could stop the big guy. LSU's free throw shooting is killing them. They missed himself. Yeah, well, Neil Bricks, another one. I think that was probably the beginning of my Free throw worry wolves. And that'll do it. A tremendous basketball game, but poor free throw shooting by LSU did the Tigers in down the stretch. Christian Leitner. You have the number one team in the damn country on their and you let them off because of the easiest part of the game. Now that's it. Duke's done. That's it. Your first year, you were shooting free throws. And I came up to you and what did I say? You said, I want you to shoot right. underhand. And, and said, your response was? Coach, I'm a hip-hop kid. I can't shoot underhand. People are going to laugh at me. Just, just let me. <laughs> and you say it's a granny shot. <laughs> yes, it's a granny I said, we got to improve your free throw shoot. Tell you what I'll do. I'll make a deal with you. If you shoot 75% in practice the next two weeks with the coach standing there, you don't have to. Do you remember what you shot? I think it was 80. 80. So 79.5, 80%. Yeah, 80%. I thought it was the size of your hand. The ball seemed like an egg in it, and you had a, almost shot put it. No, it wasn't that. It was just that I've always, I've always wanted, I've always wanted people to like me. So sometimes mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like sitting here and like I'm looking at all the faces, and I know how to shoot. And then when I shoot it and it doesn't go in, I can see people going. <laughs> so now, so now I get even tighter. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm looking around, and then I shoot it again, and then I miss again. Uh -huh. Get him out the game, Dale. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Get him out the game. So that's that's always, you know, bother me. To O'Neal, Shaq puts it up. No good. It was not fouled. Arkansas has it. Overtime. I cannot believe that was not a foul. Actually, Hackershack, that didn't start in the NBA. It started in the SEC games. O'Neal with the frustration. It was worse than hack a shack. It was almost a assault on the court. Pulling on him, knocking him off balance. Hack a shack to me was a sign of respect. It was like, you know what? 
We can't stop this guy, but this guy is not a good free throw shooter. You want to get 30 points, make 30 free throws then. I called John Guthrie, who's now passed in the officials, and I told him, if you can't get this under control, I'm going to really advise him to go to the NBA. I'm not going to see his career end. You've got to clean it up. We're in the quarterfinals of the SEC tournament, playing against Tennessee. But I got some guy on me named Carlos Gross. He's small. He's not really that strong. I'm killing this guy. 20, 30 points ahead of him? Right. So what do they do? They go to the hacker shack. Uh, LSU won four in a row. Lost that heartbreaking game to Arkansas. Uh -oh. Uh oh, look out. Groves and O'Neal square off, and Dale Brown is pushing Groves. Dale Brown took a shot at Groves, and now I remember mean, running out on the court towards Carlos Groves. I was going to say to him, "You're a punk." Benches have cleared. Somebody said I took a punch at you. That's absolutely a total lie. Did I want to punch him? Probably. That was as wild a scene as I have seen in college basketball. Every now and then, a guy would do something that I thought was dirty, and I would always look look over at the bench, and I just want you to one time just go. Go get him. If you're ejected for fighting, you're suspended for the next game. O'Neal could be out tomorrow. OK, they want to see the videotape. They so want to see the video. Guys, we have two views. We have one overhead and one floor. The officials are looking as you look at home. Here's the uh, PA announcer, Tony Giles, with the explanation. Ejected for fighting, number 33, Shaquille O'Neal. A total of 10 players were sent off, and LSU's big fella would be suspended for the next game in the SEC tournament semifinals. I do not want to see this young man blatantly fouled and hurt. I am recommending Shaquille's parents that he turns NBA. Go back to the hotel. Well, now I'm thinking Coach Brown's gonna be upset with me. And as soon as he, you know, comes in my room, good job. I'm tired of people hanging on you. You did the right thing, don't feel bad. And he left. I was like, this, this guy cares. This guy cares about the person before he does the situation. The next day against Kentucky, without Shaq, Tigers lost to their bitter rivals. Dale had his Tigers ready. They had a gallant effort without the dominance of Shaquille O'Neal. They gave Patino's club all they could handle. No doubt LSU's run for the SEC Tourney Championship got shortchanged without Shaquille O'Neal. But the good news is Shaq will be back for the NCAA. From 1984 when he met me to now, it's never been a time when Coach Brown's not stuck up for me. I never got to tell you thank you. Besides my father. The only other coach that ever stuck up for Every sign pointed to the 1992 NCAA tournament as Shaquille O'Neal's last chance to win a national title. We're underway. The winner goes to the Sweet 16. And in the second round against the Indiana Hoosiers, Shaq pulled together all the tools he'd been taught in his three years with Coach Dale Brown. 36 points, 12 rebounds, and 12 for 12 from the free throw line. 12 out of 12 free throws. I thought, what is going on here? Boy, I'm a good coach. And he's perfect from the free throw line. Big night offensively tonight. No one other than O'Neal. It wasn't enough. Another season was over, and Shaquille had to decide if he had played his last game for Coach Dale Brown. I never wanted to let down. Phil and Lucille Harrison and you. Mm. And I promise you, before I came here, that all the pro You're talk, right. we weren't going right. to have that conversation that I would stay. So when I say, Coach, I got to talk to you, and, and then you interrupt it. I know what you're going to say. I want you to go pro. I was like, huh? I was like, you know yeah. what I'm I was saying to myself, yeah. You're right. has Coach been drinking? It was time. It was time. Selfishly, would have I liked to have been around him for another reason? Yes, 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 yes. 
but it was time for him to go. It wasn't a loss as a player. I loved the kid. It was a loss as a friend. ESPN has learned that LSU Shaquille O'Neal will leave school one year early for the NBA draft. I'd like to give special thanks to Coach Dale Brown for all he has done in addition to, and allowing me the opportunity to gain basketball experience from a college aspect. I think the experience was very much needed, but now I'm ready to take what I've learned on with me to the NBA. With the first pick in the 1992 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic selects Shaquille O'Neal from Louisiana State University. Shaquille O'Neal never forgot his roots. And eight years after he left LSU, he returned to finish what he started. To all the young people out there who think money and fame is important, that's only a small piece of the pie. You need an education to be totally secured in life. I feel very secure. I can go get a real job now. So she's very proud of me. This is a day that she's been waiting for for a long time. It was a great day. That's why I just love coming back to Baton Rouge. Yeah. You know, the people here are so honest. I just love coming back to the first football game, love coming and walking here. I brought my sons in here because, you know, they they kind of they kind of saw me play mm -hmm. late towards my career. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, like, I always try to tell them stories to impress them, but they never believe them. Uh. I got my jersey to try LSU. No, you don't, Daddy. So I got to uh, bring him down here, look, oh my God. I got my own statue at LSU. Yeah, whatever, daddy. How do you have a statue before LeBron? How do you have a statue before? I'm like, I, I'm like, son, I used to be the man. He's averaging 29, I used to average 39. No, you didn't. College was the only level Shaquille O'Neal didn't win a championship. But the memories of this place are different than anywhere else. From the PMAT. It's over! Look at the dancer! Look at Dale Brown! To the quad. To everywhere else in Baton Rouge. And after the death of Philip Harrison in 2013, The friend he still comes back here to see means all that much more. Beautiful day, just like when you visited. I remember this lake. Hey, you remember the time my biological father kept calling you and you called me in the office? I didn't know it was a biological father. The guy kept on calling me, and he had about that roll of slips, and I brought him in. You kept my brother in the office, and I said, who is this guy? And you went just like this. I crumbled you took the pink slips, away. you went to my garbage can, you said, someone that's not important. I remember that. Thing. I tracked my biological father down. Asked him if I'd come by his house. I said, Mr. Brown, let me ask you a question. How could any man have a child and never once call, send us any money? My mother suffered. You didn't know if I was in prison or a star. How could that happen? Oh, well, I found so guilty, and there's no sense in doing it. So I, I ended it right away, and I said, Mr. Brown, I have no hard feelings, and I shook his hand and left. When he died, no disrespect to him, I thought a flea died. It didn't mean anything. A lot of people ask me, how did I overcome it? And I always answer, I didn't overcome it. The guy who raised me, Philip Harrison, was somebody that I believed in. He made me who I am today. Lucille made me who I am today. LSU made me who I am today. And you made me who I am today. 
It wouldn't be no shack if it wasn't for you, brother. Thank you for coming to see me in Germany. Thank you for being hard on me. Thank you for punishing me when I used to skip class. Thank you for writing me every day. There's no more powerful word than thanks. And I thank you too for believing in me. Quiet and peaceful, huh? Yep. Dear Shaquille, hold on to this schoolboy spirit. A spirit with its natural grace. Easy dignity. And the blossoming buds of a genius on a basketball court. Make your dignity as tall as your body. Never, ever drop it or sell it or become complimented out of it. Respect others. Even the most humble. And remember that above all else, you're a member of a group called Mankind. So be your brother's keeper. Lift him up when he's fallen. Bandage him when he is wounded. In body, he may not be as big as you. But in spirit, he is. Well, that's my advice to you, Shaquille. You really don't need it. You are what you are. A good man. Full of love. Love, love you, Coach, Coach Brown. Brown.